Shalom and welcome to Temple Talk. This is Yitzhak Ruvain speaking to you from south of Jerusalem here in the Holy Land of Israel. Today is the 17th day of the month of Mar Cheshvan, 5784. It's October 31st, 2023. This week we are reading Parashat Vayera from the book of Genesis, uh, beginning chapter 18, verse 1, concluding chapter 22, verse 24. And uh, today is the 25th day of the war uh, being waged between Israel and her enemies, her enemies uh, in the south, meaning Gaza, uh, being Hamas, and their um, their uh, other terrorist groups, which, of course, uh, work with Hamas, not to mention uh, the war-torn impoverished humanitarian crisis burdened country of Yemen which has been waging a civil war for years and years and as well as a war against Saudi Arabia has uh, been firing uh, begun firing missiles in the direction of Israel Israel has been able to take them down before they get over Israel airspace and they have declared war on Israel of course we are talking about the Houthi uh, terrorist organization which is another proxy of Iran so this is really Israel's war against Iran Israel's also um, been back and forth with uh, mortar and uh, missiles and uh, with Hezbollah in Lebanon and with uh, different uh, again Iranian proxy militias in Syria and Israel's been bombing and taking out of commission uh, the airports in Syria because the Iranians uh, use those airports to bring in weapons. So Israel is really fighting a multiple front war and uh, Israel has moved in with uh, tanks and foot soldiers and, and more into the northern part of Gaza and uh, seems to have sort of reached into center Gaza as they are tightening the the ring around the where where most of the uh, Hamas uh, leadership uh, is uh, centered. Uh, just breaking news now: two Israeli soldiers were killed in battles today. There's some very f- fierce battles being waged. Uh, between Israeli forces and uh, Hamas terrorists. Yesterday, of course, we received the very welcome, the very gratifying, the very happy news that Israeli forces had actually um, r- rescued one of the hostages, a, a an Israeli soldier, a, a young woman who had been one of the um, Tatspitaniot. Uh, she was uh, a soldier who was part of the team that that was uh, kept their eyes on the border fence via the cameras, etc., etc. Which, of course, Hamas knocked out right away, leading, le- leaving these soldiers very vulnerable. And they were surprised uh, at their base, and uh, many were killed, and a number were taken hostage, and. Uh, this one woman, somehow, Israeli intelligence uh, got the information that she was being held separately from the others in the northern part of Gaza, and they were able to um, rescue her. There was a gun battle with her people holding her, and they were killed, and she was rescued and brought home to her family, um, which was a huge, huge celebration for the entire nation here everybody was just simply is just simply thrilled and of course many prayers were had been said on behalf of her and all the hostages and many prayers of gratitude have been said since her release I have to tell you that um, on the one side we are still reeling from the horrors that took place on the 7th of October and many of those horrors are just still being discovered as as missing persons are being discovered uh, body parts uh, another young woman 
um, who was at the, the music festival that was attacked on the 7th, who was seen uh, in horrible videos from that day being taken into Gaza, and her, uh, it wasn't sure if she was lifeless or unconscious, her body was, uh, was being paraded on the back of a truck through streets of Gaza where people were spitting on her and her fate from that day on was unknown until just yesterday when again I guess the teams that accompanied the troops into northern Gaza uh, were able to identify a fragment of her skull and able to make the identification with DNA and it was clear that uh, if that fragment of skull was missing then there was no way she was alive and uh, probably uh, probably attests to the fact that she was beheaded so you know every day we are hearing about and being exposed to new atrocities that took place sometime between the 7th and today. But on the other hand, uh, the Israeli spirit has uh, never been stronger. People are united. People are united in prayer. There's people saying prayers and people doing wonderful things to help one another out. People are saying Tehillim or Psalms, which is a traditional uh, practice uh, for people do all the time, but especially in times of trouble, uh, the entire nation is 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 um, involved in these activities. And yesterday, when this news that uh, this one soldier had been uh, rescued from captivity, uh, as the news uh, newscasters on each of the different. Uh, uh, news stations in Israel heard the news. He, their, their their joy, their it was it was incredible. It was you know amazing and and prayers for the release of of you know say, thanking God for the release of cap of captives, which is a Jewish prayer because we've been through this so many times. We're being said it's just an amazing experience, uh, you know, through the th thick and thin and through the worst and the best. Uh, this people of Israel is uh, on fire right now, and this was uh, probably the biggest tactical error that Hamas made, and that uh, they, as as someone f uh, from the army put it today, they shot the lion in the leg, and the lion woke up, and the lion now is ready to devour them. So, uh, you know, I've been posting uh, on our Facebook page uh, pictures of soldiers uh, praying, uh, a, a woman soldier lighting Shabbat candles, and, and men in their talit and tefillin, and there's so many videos of soldiers singing beautiful, beautiful songs of, of faith. I can't post them all, I don't want to post them all, but uh, it's so encouraging and uh, the war effort has been steady and uh, uh, despite the inevitable losses that we will suffer uh, in terms of soldiers that, that have fallen and will fall unfortunately uh, Israel has the upper hand and is devastating the Hamas terrorists and uh, many pictures have been released over the past couple of days from inside Gaza pictures and videos taken um, by by the army showing the you know devastation cities just leveled as they should be um, and um, things being uh, a bulldoze because in every building that's not uh, knocked down can be a terrorist uh, waiting to attack so the army is moving steadily and uh, we are always uh, looking for for good news so it's not going to be a quick war it's already been over three weeks like I said today's the 25th day but um, that's the way it's going to be 
uh, much more troubling for many, for myself and many people in Israel is what's happening abroad. The hatred, the anti-Semitism that's been unleashed. I talked about it last week as well, but it's just uh, incredible that uh, that uh, people from Western countries, United States, uh, people who apologize for being so privileged are now, I'm talking about progressives of course, are now uh, having a big festival of hate and supporting Hamas and denying the, the massacre that took place. It's just incredible how how intelligent people can twist when they when they've got they've been brainwashed into some kind of a, a thought regimen and and they can't break out of it and so they twist everything in order to make it fit into what they want to believe so they deny facts they deny facts that are right in front of their faces they deny the truth and they turn everything upside down I know there are some people who have as they say woken up from the woke uh, from the woke ideology and are seeing things differently but it's uh, pretty terrifying pretty discouraging and pretty sad if America doesn't get a grip on this and I know there are many many people in America that are fully supportive of Israel and, and basically it's not even being supportive of Israel it's being supportive of, of, of civilization of humanity I mean there hasn't been a clear uh, a clear good against evil here and you know choose good that's what the Torah says choose good I give you a choice God says you can choose between life and death good and evil and and the Torah says in the book of Deuteronomy choose good that's that's the side you should take choose life choose good and I know there are many people in the United States and some of the Congress people have spoken very beautifully and powerfully some uh, mayors and, and governors have as well and um, uh, of course presidential candidate Nikki Haley has been you know very vocal about this and she's always been a strong friend of Israel and uh, that's very very important uh, not simply for Israel to hear but uh, you're going through tough times in America and uh, it, I think that people who have their head on straight and see right from wrong and good from bad uh, when they speak clearly and forcefully it's good for other people to hear um, because you, you all need to to be strong so here we are this week's parsha is parsha de Vayera, and he appeared who is he well we're going to find out that in a moment um last week's parsha ended up with uh the covenant of the circumcision between Hashem and Avraham and his offspring forever and ever, beginning with Ishmael and um, other people in his household that weren't his biological children, but they were people who he had brought into the fold, so to speak. So they also were circumcised, of course, with Avraham. And that's where we left off last week. And this week we're going to read a few verses in Hebrew, then in English beginning with chapter 18, verse 1. Vayera elav Hashem ba'elone mamre v'hu yoshev petach ha'ohel kachom hayom v'yisa enav vayar v'hine shlosha anashim nitzavim alav vayera vayarots likratam mi petach ha'ohel v'yishtahu arza v'yomer Adonai im nah matzatichin b'enecha al na ta'avo me'al avedecha Yukahna maat maim rahatsu ragalechem vishanu vishanu tahata etz. Okay. Hashem appeared to him, to Avraham. Hashem appeared to Avraham in the plains of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance of the tent in the heat of, of the day. He lifted his eyes and saw, and behold, three men were standing over him. He perceived, so he ran toward them from the entrance of the tent and bowed toward the ground. And he said, My Lord, referring to uh, the three men, because the the word 
which is often translated as Lord in Hebrew, Adonai is actually the plural of Adoni, which means Sir, my Lord, Sir. This way, in this time, it's it's actually plural because he's addressing the three people, but it could be addressing Hashem because it's the same word. If I find favor, my Lord, if I find favor in your eyes, please pass not away from your servant. Um, let some water be brought and wash your feet and recline beneath the tree. I will fetch a morsel of bread that you may sustain yourselves and go on inasmuch as you have passed your servant's way. They said, Do so just as you have said. So Avram hastened to the tent to Sarah and said, Hurry, three seahs of meal, fine flour, knead, and make cakes. Then Avram ran to the cattle, took a calf tender and good, and gave it to the youth who hurried to prepare it. He took cream and milk in the calf, which he had brought, and placed these before them. He stood over them beneath the tree, and they ate. They said to him, where's Sarah, your wife? And he said, behold, in the tent. Okay, I'm going to stop reading there. So you probably are familiar with the story. And so many things going on here. Uh, and we're going to fill in with a little midrash. And again, just a reminder, midrash is, is uh, the writing of our, our sages to fill in uh, things that aren't stated uh, directly from the actual words of the Torah, things that are implied, things that would help a story to fill out, you know, fill out a story, what's missing, and sometimes things word in such a way that there's a question, why, and so uh, the Midrash comes to fill, it in, fill that in. Um, sometimes it can be very fanciful, sometimes it's actually historical, and sometimes it actually uh, seems to be the most logical way to fill in and, and piece together what what the Torah is telling us. But Hashem appeared to Avraham in the plains of Mamar where he was sitting at the entrance of the tent in the heat of the day. Now, this takes place uh, right after we read about Avraham's circumcision. And of course, uh, he was an elderly man and uh, uh, undergoing a, an operation such as this must have been very painful and would take him time to recover. So our sages pick up on this in the heat of the day. Why, why does it mention the heat of the day? Kahom hayom. And they say because God made the day very hot so that Avraham would stay inside and not be outside. Because Avraham was always outside his tent uh, looking for uh, uh, any passerbys, anybody, any sojourners on the way that he could invite in. Because Avraham was known, of course, for Achnasat Orachim, a beautiful mitzvah of inviting people into your tent, inviting people into your house, having people over for a meal. And so Hashem didn't want him to be doing that. He wanted him to be resting. A, that explains the heat of the day. So if it's going to be so hot, he'll stay inside. And Hashem actually appeared to him. That's another mitzvah. Bikor cholim, visiting the sick. This is another beautiful mitzvah that people do all the time, and that is to visit the sick, whether they're you know, visit someone who's in the hospital, to visit someone at home. Um, and Hashem himself uh, gave the, f the example by visiting Avraham. But Avraham, being Avraham, insisted on sitting at the entrance of his tent to see if people were coming along. He was very stubborn. He was obstinate. And despite Hashem's efforts to, to make him comfortable by keeping him inside, he was stubborn and was sitting at the entrance of his tent. And of course, three people appeared. And uh, we know from further reading that these were actually three angels. So, but he saw three people and he wanted to invite them into his tent. He, Achnasat Orachim, inviting in guests, inviting the stranger in. So he actually interrupted his session, as it were, with Hashem. Hashem appeared to him. And every time Hashem appears to Avram, Hashem's got something to say. If you hear that, that's a jet flying overhead. I don't know if, if the mic picks it up, but that is a jet flying overhead on its way to Gaza, where, where I live is about 25 miles outside of Gaza. That's where I'm recording from. Uh, so we hear these jets all the time, and of course we're very happy and grateful to hear the jets. Anyway, so where was I? So uh, Avraham actually interrupted his session with Hashem to greet these people. That's how important Achnasat Orachim is. That's how important it is to 
to greet and invite into your house a stranger. Um, and of course, he invites them in. He wants to prepare a meal for them. They agree. Um, even though they are angels, they won't actually be eating the food, but they will go through the motions, as it were. And then they ask where Sarah is, because this is the visit that Hashem has been promising Abraham. They have come to announce that uh, Sarah will become pregnant and will have a baby. And, of course, we read... Uh, verse 11, chapter 18. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, well, in, well on in years. The manner of women had ceased to be with Sarah, and Sarah laughed at herself, saying, Am I withered? After I have withered, shall I again have delicate skin? And my husband is old. And then Hashem said to Avram, What is that to how Sarah laughed, saying, Shall I in truth bear a child, though I have age? Is anything beyond Hashem? the appointed time I will return to you and at this time next year and Sarah will have a son. And Sarah goes on to deny it. She was a little bit taken aback. It's very interesting. Um, what I find beautiful about this is that she laughed. And of course, this is not the first time that there's laughter uh, in last week's Parsha, at the end of the Parsha, when Hashem announced to, to, to Avraham that he will have a child. Avraham laughed and he said, you're going to name your child Yitzchak, which means he will laugh. Yitzchak means he will laugh. And But what I find very beautiful is that we know that laughter is healing, right? Laughter is, is good for the body. And, you know, when a person is ill uh, and you can bring them some laughter, they feel better. And when we laugh, we feel better. You know, we might be tired, we might be achy, and we laugh, and all of a sudden we feel younger. Laughter is very therapeutic. And it says specifically that she laughed Bakirba. She laughed inside. How is it exactly? Um, okay, so this translation is at herself. But Bakirba means in her innards, really. She was laughing. Her laughter was, was, was deep. It wasn't simply a, a superficial laughter. It was wholehearted you know, a belly laugh, literally a belly laugh, and I'm saying, I think that it, that laugh is is what enabled her to be able to bear a child, because at that moment when she laughed, she was, she, she, her old age disappeared, she became a young woman again, at least internally, and able to bear a child, so laughter is so important, you know, There again, I was saying it before. The in the face of of the horrors that we faced here in Israel, and the fact that we're at war now, and the fact that hundreds of thousands of people have been displaced, and people have lost their families, their children, their parents, their communities, their neighbors. Uh, spirits are high, and we keep our spirits high by singing by dancing. The soldiers are singing and dancing, uh, obviously when they're not uh, in the middle of battle, but while they are in their bases. And though, you know, people are filming it and sharing it with people, and it is just so uplifting, so encouraging, and gives us strength, it gives us courage, it gives, makes us want to fight. So important. There's another jet flying overhead. And, um, you know, we just, when we are up like this, we just, we, we feel like we're invincible and we feel that God is with us because God is with happy. You know, there's an understanding in Judaism that, that prophecy uh, has to come with joy and, and that, and that filah, prayer, has to come with joy. And, and God wants us to be happy. And when we're happy, we have greater access I mean, of course, when we're sad, God hears us and wants to heal us and make us feel better. But when we're happy, it's like all the gates are open. And uh, God is, is very, very near us. So, you know, Jews love to be happy. We love life. We love to be happy. And um, it's the, the pain and it's the sadness in life that makes us so appreciate the ability 
to be happy and to be happy and joyful even in times of sorrow it's so important it's not an escape but it's a it's 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 strength it's girding our loins because we have to move forward we have to rebuild and uh, we're doing that so in the case of Sarah um, she she grew younger when she laughed so of course as we know the story the baby is born Yitzhak is born it's a great celebration um, there's the whole story of, of, of uh, Hagar and Yishmael again when Yitzhak starts to, to grow she, Sarah sees that uh, Ishmael is not being very nice to her child so she again compels Avraham to send away Hagar and Ishmael and we have that story but even before that there is the story of Sodom, Stom in Hebrew Sodom and, and the, as Again, another great mitzvah, as these three angels left, um, Abraham accompanied them. Because it's another, it's an, it's another mitzvah, it's another uh, deed, a good deed to, when you have a guest in your house, to, you know, not just walk them to the door and say goodbye, but to walk them at least a few steps, to accompany them, to escort them out, um, to send them on their way, uh, in a friendly and positive way and so Avraham uh, escorts these angels and actually the three become two because every angel an angel is actually a force of energy that has a, a mission to complete a single mission and one of these angels the mission was to inform Avraham and Sarah that they would have a child so now as they're walking away there's two angels whose mission will be to destroy stone Sodom and to deliver any righteous person living there out of Sodom so Hashem a very beautiful thing Hashem says uh, Hashem says Shall I conceal from from Avraham what I do, now that Avraham is surely to become a great and mighty nation, and the nations of the earth shall bless themselves by him? So Hashem has a plan to destroy stone because they're so bad, they're so evil, they're so wicked. And of course, Avraham's nephew, Lot, is living among them. Um, and again, I'm continuing now, verse 19 from from chapter 18 verse 19 for I have loved him because he commands his children and his household after him that they keep the way of Hashem doing charity and justice so these this is what Avram was all about charity justice kindness reaching out taking people in in order that Hashem might then bring upon Avram that which he had spoken of him so uh, Hashem makes his amazing decision he says I'm gonna I'm gonna talk with Avram I'm gonna tell Avram what I'm doing okay when he did that, he was opening up a dialogue with Avram. He wasn't uh, making a he wasn't making a diktat. He wasn't making a commandment. He was saying, "This is what I plan to do." So he was inviting Avram's input. And of course, as we know, Avram said, "Wait, what if there's fifty righteous men in the city? You can, you know that's justice." Uh, Will you stamp out the righteous along with the wicked? What if there should be 50 righteous people in the midst of the city? Would you still stamp it out rather than spare the place for the sake of the 50 righteous people within it? Would it be a sacrilege to you to do such a thing to bring death upon the righteous along with the wicked? So the righteous will be like the wicked? It would be a sacrilege to you. Shall you judge of the, all the earth not do justice? He is basically uh, telling God, No, you can't do that, God. That's not justice. Now, a year ago I was... On this same program, I was saying a very similar thing, that basically Avraham taught God how to mete out justice. And that's what we're reading here. And, and, and someone who was listening was very offended, and they said, you know, we, God is God. You know, we're, we don't tell God what to do. But actually, when God made a covenant with Avraham, and here's the proof, and later a covenant with Israel, a covenant is, we know a covenant is a two-way thing. Each side has to fulfill its 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 part of the covenant, and our covenant, our part of the covenant, isn't simply to take orders blindly. 
No, our part of the covenant also includes being righteous, meeting out justice. And we are allowed, God gives us the, the right, the responsibility to, to work it out with him, to, to you know, wrangle, to, to barter, as it were. Uh, and this is a case that Abraham thought was, was so crucial because not only should the righteous not suffer with, with the wicked, but people have to understand that this is justice. You know, the days, Abraham's basically saying to, to Hashem, the days of wiping out mankind in the flood, they're over. You can't do that anymore. That's, that's not justice anymore. You have to be a little bit more discerning. And of course, Hashem welcomed this. This is what Hashem was hoping for. This is what Hashem was expecting from Avram. And so they worked it out. They worked it down to 10 people. And then they went their separate ways. And of course, as we know, uh, the angels enter into Sodom. And uh, Sodom, as we can see by the story, is truly a wicked place. Um, but I have to say, the wickedness of Sodom and even the Midrashim would, would speak of, 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 of greater wickedness. Um, it doesn't even approach what we witnessed uh, from the uh, people of Gaza these past weeks. Um, but still, you know, there Israel, if there's a righteous person in Gaza, then, uh, you know, Israel hopes not to harm that person. But um, that's justice, and that's justice, and that is a covenant of justice that's, that's worked out between man and God. And, and we can thank Abraham for that we're enlightened, that we, that we, I mean, God told us to discern between good and bad, between the, the righteous and the wicked. And that's exactly what Abraham was doing. He was doing his part. He was, he was fulfilling his responsibility. And quickly, because we only have a few minutes left, at the very conclusion, of course, of Parsha Vayera is the very famous Akedah, the binding of Yitzhak of Isaac. And uh, that whole question, you know, God all of a sudden, after all this, uh, he's going to ask Avraham to make an offering of his own son. And Avraham, after arguing with Hashem about the people of, uh, of Sodom and, and justice, and he's just going to go along with it blindly. Well, it's not quite so simple. Um, true that uh, Hashem made this, made this, uh, uh, told Avraham to do this, and Avraham seemed to agree to it. But as we read the story carefully, it seems like both it was a test for both sides. Certainly, it was a test for both sides, and and Avraham had to prove to Hashem that he would, you know, he was there in the trenches with him, <laughs> right to the bitter end, and Hashem had to prove to Avraham that this is really not what he wanted. It was a test also that Hashem would not ultimately want Avraham to to kill his own son. After all, I mean, this is the son through through whom the promise of a nation and of a people and of the land belonging to that people and being a blessing to all the nations is going through Yitzchak. And this is what God told Avraham. So this is asking him to put an end to his life is a total contradiction that Avraham couldn't accept, and he, but he had to hear that from Hashem. And so, of course, at the last minute, uh, Hashem uh, sent an angel and said, stop. And that's when this covenant, a new covenant was made when Avraham said, in this place, God is seen and that place, as we know, is Mount Moriah, and that's the place of the Holy Temple, and the place where man and God see eye to eye. And all is good, and all will one day be good, and I thank you very much for being with me. Temple Talk.